Welcome to Faith of Victory Church Sunday morning service. We're glad you're with us. All those out there on the Facebook world, we're glad to have you with us. We're going to spend some time singing um, what we consider just traditional Christmas carols or music. So we just want to honor the Lord. We, this is a celebration. Christmas it comes from the term the Christ Mass. The celebr- and, we, and Mass is the term used in, in the Catholic Church for the celebration. So it is the celebration of Christ. Amen. So Christmas, the Christ Amen. Mass, let us join together this morning, honor and magnify the Lord, and uh, let's spend some time together as a family in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Join us and go with, sing with us. Hallelujah. Oh 
last one is uh it's just going to be an instrumental uh silent night and if you want to have a seat you can and just in, uh, enjoy the worship time and thinking about what the what silent night is talking about uh this song was actually written in 1818 so it's running up on its 200th year anniversary so um it was it was presented to franz gruber uh by a guy named joseph more the words were and he asked, can you put music to this? And uh, so Gruber said, yeah, I'll look at it. This was Christmas Eve, mind you. And uh, Gruber wrote the song with just a guitar accompaniment and uh, the melody to the words that Moore uh, presented. And, um, and they did it that Christmas Eve night, and they did it the next year, and then it became a tradition. And it's become a Christmas tradition ever since for near about 200 years. So it's a beautiful song. It's one of my favorite songs. 
And uh, I thought I would just share a little bit about that. All right. Guitars and all that stuff, but that, 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 that acoustic is just sweet. It's beautiful. Amen. So, it's, I like can relate. It's nice to have a, a guitar player in the house when they go upstairs to go to the room or whatever, and all of a sudden you start hearing, you know, the guitar. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you're like, yeah, just turn everything else off. Just, just listen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, we're glad you're with us today. Uh, Merry Christmas, Feliz Navidad, Joel, Joel Noel, Hallelujah! And uh, I don't know how to say it in German. I would, or Italian, but so we'll, we'll stay with the French, Spanish, and English. How about that? I mean, uh, praise the Lord. We're we're glad that you're all here, and uh, praise God. Don't forget, there is no service next Sunday. We will have Wednesday this week. Okay, so our Wednesday night. Thank you. Our Wednesday night service is our last service before Christmas. And then we won't have the Wednesday after Christmas. So this Wednesday we have church. So uh, come out and get your fish. How could I forget the kids? They're sitting there looking at me. Hey, guys. All right. So those are the announcements, basically. Um, we have a, um, oh, my daughter sends me uh, Merry Christmas in German. I'm like, now how am I supposed to say that? Let's see here. For leak, we're nothing. For leak, what nothing? Is that am I close, Dick? For leak, why nothing? Why nothing? Why nothing? Okay, v, no, no, that's right. V. <laughs> Merry Christmas in German. For Weihnachten. Doesn't sound quite as pleasant as Joe Noel. <laughs> Does it? That's... Oh. Schoenack. Okay. So now Dick is German, right? Schubert, or probably something else in German. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Okay. So to our drummers, friends, we tried. Nate, I, th I think between Nick, that Nate and Dick, they got it right. I, on the other hand, destroyed it. Not in a good way. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are glad we can have fun in the Lord. Amen. And uh, serve a good God. Hallelujah. So we'll get back out here and all of our Facebook friends from all over the world. We love you. God bless you. We trust that you'll have a wonderful and blessed Christmas. Uh, again, I don't know how to say it in Italian, but, huh? I forget it. Buona, one, buon Natale. Okay. All right, let's do Japanese. And they decided to believe in All right. I went over to uh, somebody, somebody's house the other night that invited us over, and they had um, a, a, a couple come in, and he was from uh, Mali, which is French speaking Africa. And uh, so I said, oh, so you, he, I said, oh, so you speak French? Oh, yeah. And so I, I, started, I talked to him in French some, and they got ready to leave, and Joya Noel, but then they had some Latinas show up. So I was, Feliz Navidad. <laughs> you know? Hallelujah. I'm just glad the, you know, the, the Thailand people from Thailand didn't show up. I've really been in trouble. Or Estonia. It's even worse. Hallelujah. All right. Well, it's the time to receive our Sunday morning Thailand offering. If you're an offering envelope, raise your hand. The ushers will be glad to assist you. And if you're looking at me on Facebook, I'm still trying to figure out a solution to the, me looking like Madame Blueberry. I'm so blue from the lighting, uh, but if we don't have lighting, I'm dark. You can't see me, so um, I'm so blue. Anyway, from VeggieTales, guys, if y'all say, my damn blueberry on VeggieTales. Praise God. And uh, if you're not going to don't, go ahead and ring up your uh, electronic giving, and uh, we're going to pray and dismiss the kids and get in here. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for the time, the offering that's brought to the storehouse of God. Thank you that people are blessed. Thank you that we walk in all the goodness and fullness and mercies of God the land of living. Bless the kingdom of God because we love you, we honor you, and we want to see your work go out through all the earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you as you give. And uh, once they finish receiving the offering, we'll let the little guys uh, take a hike. Be the first time you ever heard take a hike and not mean something, you know, not being mean. All righty. All right, guys, you can go back with Miss Janie back there. Hallelujah. Yes, man. Praise God. All righty. Well, can, can we thank, thank God for his goodness this year? Hallelujah. We, have, um, uh, we individually in this church and, uh, have taken some, uh, had some opportunities to overcome. Amen. And, uh, but we, we can say victory, 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 victory. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, Janie hung her, her Christmas ornament the, the, uh, from the uh, the cancer society, um, because of overcoming cancer, hallelujah, uh, and uh, praise God. You know, it's been a journey, but you know what? You know, journeys are great when you win, and we win, amen? Dr. Bill, they tried to nail his coffin shut while he was in the hospital bed. I mean, they came in there, they came in there with the nails and, and just started putting them in there, and, and Melinda had to stop them, <laughs> hallelujah, and, uh, but, you know, the bill's up and going again, praise God, and he's not, you know, they, they him, you have days, not weeks or months. And, uh, well, it's been weeks and months. Hallelujah. And he's, he's getting stronger and better every day. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and with us, hallelujah, praise God. So we're excited about that. And I'm winning the bat. I win and am winning and getting better every day. Um, my doctor no longer says anything about cutting anything off. Hallelujah. You know, well, it's, it's stable. It's not, it's not digressing. And, uh, We'll just see it close up. Well, yeah, we do, but that's because it is. But, it, you know, it, you know he, wanted, he wanted to cut it off and then cut less off, and then, well, we're just keeping an eye on it, and now it's, it's you're stable. You know, it's stable, which means it's healing and not getting worse. And uh, so we're, we're blessed. Uh, you know, the battles, of, uh, uh, the battles have to be won. We have to win by faith. Amen. I, one of my relatives asked me about that. Yes. And the arm is free. He's got his cast thingy off. Hallelujah. Yep. And in battle, sometimes you make, you make uh, strategic errors. <laughs> yeah. 
That was a nice way of saying getting cocky. Anyway, I thought that sounded pretty cool, a strategic error. Hallelujah. But then, you know, you regroup and you come back at it. Amen? Hallelujah. You, you, just don't, uh, you, you, don't quit, you don't give up. You don't quit. You keep moving forward. So um, I had a relative ask me the other day, said, how are Janie's cancer numbers? I said, she don't have any. You know, in other words, where they, where they look at your body, there's none there. It's gone. There's nothing in there. There is none. Uh, see you in a year. Hallelujah. Amen. So we are we're rejoicing. Um, and, and, and we have our own faith victory stories to tell. Amen. Well, we don't have to tell, you don't have to tell somebody else's. We got our own. Amen. And, uh, you know, I, I, told, I told Jones a couple weeks ago when he called, I said, you know, uh, you, you preach a long toast or not. That was a joke. Anyway, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And we, we've been kind of just really sharing more from our heart the past couple of weeks than really a teaching that can operate in our life and that spirit can give us guidance and give us direction and, and show us things to come that we know. Not. What's that? It gives you an advantage. Being led by the Spirit of God is, is, is vital to our spiritual well-being and spiritual ministry and spiritual growth. Amen. And so, you remember we said that, you know, we read from 1 Corinthians chapter 12 how the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. And uh, we, we studied that out and found out that word means to, to give an advantage. And so as we, as we live life, as we go through life, as we face the challenges, you know, Brother Hagin, Back, back in the old day when you still had the, the corded mics, you know, and, uh, you know, you take, then Brother Shambach would take that mic and then loop it down through his belt loop so that, so that when he turned, it wouldn't pull the handle. It pulled down here. It you know, felt like a dog on a leash because you just wanted to be able to go. And then we, got, then we got lapels that were on the cables, and you still felt like a dog on a leash. And then came the wireless. Oh, man, free at last. Oh, my, 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 my. You could just go and go. Amen. Didn't have to be concerned about whether you're going to get pulled down by the, by the leash or not. Hallelujah. How I got on that or not, I don't know. How did I get on that? Huh? Yeah. Felt like a dog on the leash. That thing had to go. All right. So as we, as we live life, as we go through life, uh, and, that, and Dad Hagen, that's where I was at. Dad Hagen used to say, he says, some folks think they're going to go through, flowery be- uh, through life on flowery beds of ease, not ever having any problems. Supposition, but it's erroneous. It's erroneous. The Bible says to fight the good fight of faith. Amen? To fight the good fight of faith. You know? And, you know, well, I've entered into faith, I've entered into rest, I, I'm just resting. Well, what do you mean by that? Because if you mean I'm not doing squat, you're wrong. That's not, what, that's not the import of that passage. They that have entered into faith have entered into rest. No, they've entered into rest from their own works. They've entered into rest from achieving or accomplishing by their power and by their ability what comes by living by faith and trusting God and believing God and doing what God says do. There is a fight to faith. Amen? And so the manifestation of the Spirit is given the prophet with all to give us an advantage. We live our life by faith. Amen? When you enter into rest, it doesn't mean you lay back on your laurels and the grace of God does it all for you. I, I heard people say things like, you know, uh, I don't have to give. I don't have to tithe. I don't have to do this. I don't have to do that. I'm under grace. And God, I'm going to be blessed, and I'm going to be healed, and I'm going to be prosperous no matter what. Wrong. And as the Cherokee side of my family would say, wrong again, pale face. Okay? Uh, you know, the, the pale face side is wrong. You know? Devil speak with fork of tongue. You know, the, you know, the Indians used to say the white man speak with fork of tongue. You know? Well, they did. They'd say one thing I want to say, do, you know, do, do them wrong. Um, the, you know, Jesus said, given it shall be given. He that soweth sparingly or shall reap sparingly. He that soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. So I am not trusting that 
I'm going to go out and make investments and get all my money back you know, because I'm just a great investor. I'm a giver. I'm a tither. Sow into the kingdom of God. And I, I want to, be, I, and I want to uh, endeavor to always be a liberal giver. Okay? Generous giver. Why? Because he who sows sparingly reaps sparingly. Now, you can say I'm under grace. I'm going to get blessed no matter what. But the Bible says if you sow sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. Every man according as he purposes his own heart. So we got Scripture that lets us know that living by faith is not doing anything. That's not what living by faith is. Living by faith is going through life, facing the challenges, and overcoming because you put your trust in God to bring you out, and you do what he says do. You walk and follow after him. You do what the word of the Lord is to you from the word of God, and you act on that, and you win and you overcome. Now, any one of us that's gone through some stuff this year could have gone back and said, well, I'm under grace. I'm going to get it no matter what, and I'm just going to lay back and do nothing. I'm going to keep drinking my five uh, Dr. Pepper in glass bottles with pure cane sugar in them a day. With your numbers out the roof on your glucose. And then expect my toe to get better. Okay? All right? Now, I put my trust in God. But at the same time, I did the right things. I'm not trusting in that. Jesus is my healer. But I can't keep acting like a bozo and expect his blessings to work. Hello. Living by faith is trusting God. But he will lead you and guide you. He'll give you wisdom. He'll tell you what to do. He'll empower you. Let me tell you something. I went cold turkey. Cold turkey. I mean, I was probably more addicted to sugar than drug addicts are to drugs. You, you mean, if you've ever been out to eat with me, you know. They could bring me a pitcher of Coke and I'd drink the whole thing. Plus the food. I like, I love the, the flavor and the feeling of a, you know, carbonated soft drink going down and stuff. Particularly, you know, the glass bottle drinks with the pure cane sugar in them. I'm, I'm like a connoisseur, you know. <laughs> I'm a soft drink connoisseur. <laughs> No, it is Tremol. I was thinking it was super. All right. The wisdom said, get out the stuff you don't need in your body. I'm not trusting in that. Jesus is my healer. I trust the wisdom of the Holy Ghost. Now, listen, I'm going to tell you, it took the, I believe it took a work of God for me just to go cold turkey like I did. Nathan looked over the other day. Janie offered me something. She, like, she said, it won't hurt you just a little bit. I said, nope, I ain't eating it. I said, that's, I ain't eating that. I said, I've already had enough of this meal. I can't have that. It won't hurt. Nathan just shakes his head and says, man, when daddy makes up his mind. <laughs> but I believe that's, that's grace by God to empower me to do. Okay? Now, my, my sugar levels were like crazy out of, out of whack. I mean, crazy. Now I've got them back down. They're where it's supposed to be, okay? But it's been changing diet, stuff, trusting God. See, so I'm not laying, I'm, what I'm trying to say is I'm not doing nothing and saying God's going to take care of it. That's not faith. You know what that is? Stupidity. Hello. I can't say I'm trusting God to heal my toe and sit down with a gallon of Coke and, and a chocolate cake and eat the whole thing and drink the whole thing. That's just, that's not smart. Okay? Can't say, well, it's, it's going to be healed. I'm not going to do anything. Praise God and go on my way. No. Um, it's just like with Janie. We, we prayed and decided what we were going to do about her direction to take. Now, you might go, well, she should have just believed God and gotten healed with nothing. Well, you know what? We go, where we go where we had the wisdom to go and what we believe was the right place to go for us at the time. You can't judge people. Well, they went to a doctor. So stinking. Well, I know somebody that died going. Uh, going to a doctor is a slap in the face of Jesus, and they're dead. And they loved the Lord. They did love the Lord. They went to heaven. But they got so over there, they could have had an operation and gotten rid of this and lived. Going to a doctor was a slap in the face of Jesus. Man. Think about it. He got up every morning and got slapped because he got, uh, Luke was on his team. Got a doctor on the team and you get, you know, no, God's not against doctors. 
Where do you think the wisdom to do what they do came from? God hates disease. He hates the work of the enemy. He's for, he's for people. Can you say amen? And see, the manifestation of the Spirit will give you wisdom. He'll, he'll give you understanding. Being in his presence will bring understanding and wisdom and revelation. Amen? So we can live the life of faith. Amen. I said amen. I mean, with, with Bill's situation, the journey of, of believing God to find the right doctor that would get the right wisdom and get the answer. As soon as they got the answer, things turned around. You know what the answer is? Basically, go home and die. Be taken over to the funeral home. You know, we, we can take care of all that for you, basically. And, uh, but they, you know, you can't let go in the midst of the battle. And the strength of the Spirit and being in, in His presence and the manifestation of wisdom and the word of knowledge or even the, in the word of wisdom of things to do and, and, and for God to manifest and to operate and to use even unsaved people to work on your behalf. See, when we live in the things of God, when we live in the Spirit, when we live by faith, we're going to get we're going to face battles. The blessings of God aren't going to fall on you like ripe, ripe cherries off a tree. You've got to fight a good fight. You've got to know what to do. Amen? And why didn't Jesus just walk up to that blind guy and say, your eyes be healed and walk away instead of spitting on the ground and putting the clay in him and sticking him in his eyeballs instead of go wash in a specific place and pull the salt out of him? And he came again seeing why didn't he just lay his hands on the, on the uh, deaf mute and tell him to be healed instead of telling him to stick out, stick out his tongue and spit on it? I mean, that's pretty gross. But who cares if you can hear and speak afterwards? Amen? Who cares? You know, most of us don't want dirt in our eyes. But. See, a, a direction by the Spirit brought the answer. These, these are the things we learn from those lessons. The manifestation of the Spirit gives us gives direction, gives insight, gives blessing, leads us into the advantage so that we can win and live by faith. Okay? I know the narrative in the church has become very... And, and listen, there is a core truth to this, to the message of grace. But it can be taken just like we did with the faith message and righteousness and things like that over the past 30 years. You can take them into an extreme where it's no longer accurate or, or, or beneficial. It becomes counterproductive. And some of the narrative on the grace message is, is the extremes of the righteousness message we had preached back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. No matter what I do, I'm righteous. You know, we, 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 we majored so much on that that people, we went off the deep end of, I can do anything I want to do, and it, don't, it doesn't affect anything. Well, it does. In an attempt to get people not to be so beaten up about being and condemned about failing, we should have gotten the balance, should have been, you know, if you did fail, God has the answer to fix that and maintain your position with him and not lose, you don't lose that. You can, you can get that fixed instead of, it just don't matter. Just go ahead and do it, you see. See, the Spirit of God will lead us. The Spirit of God will. You know, they that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now, you know, your daughters are sons too. It's used in a non-gender way. Uh, we live in a world, man, it's so, it's so crazed out, out there. It is not Z and we, or the Z or the we sons of God, or of God. Okay? Oh, my goodness. Whatever personal pronoun people de de desire. I I'm sorry, you are what you are. You're born that way, okay? You can't, you, I mean, I don't care what doctor you go to and try to fix whatever, you are what you are. If it's because you want to, I may want to be a cow, but I'm not a cow. Really don't want to be a cow because that means I'm, I'm probably dinner for somebody in a little while. Bacon or a, or a pig, you know, bacon. Yeah. Maybe I want to be a adorable beagle or something where they'll just give you food all the time now 
They that are, they that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. That term was used in relationship to being children of God. You've grown, you matured. Our life of faith, being led by the Spirit is so vital. Having the advantage of the Spirit, praying in the Spirit, you know? He to speak of mysteries, speaks divine secrets with God. Romans says that we, uh, who knows the things of man except the Spirit of man? Who knows the things of God save the Spirit of God? And then he goes on and says, he's revealed unto us by his Spirit. We have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. See, the, the, the Spirit reveals the things of God to us. So you can't just stop, I have not seen, ear hath not heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. That's pre get born again, get wisdom of God. Once you get born again, get wisdom of God, God reveals those things to you by his spirit. He reveals them to us by his spirit. Can you say amen? Can you say amen? And so the Holy Ghost, the anointing, the one working in us brings wisdom, brings revelation. That was off. Oh, well, hallelujah. Amen. So as we, as we pray in the Spirit and we stay in the Spirit, so we're, uh, we're to live in the Spirit. And in that is the manifestation of the Spirit. And let me say, the manifestation of the Spirit is not just limited to what we call the nine gifts of the Spirit. That, that is the category of specific demonstrations or operations that, uh, that we have, gifts. But the Spirit manifests in many ways outside of those, okay, nine marked things, the wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits, special faith, gifts of healings, working of miracles, tongues, interpretation of tongues, and prophecy. Those are the operations to and through the church, but also the Spirit manifests himself in as the teacher, as the intercessor, as the strengthener, as the standby, as the advocate, amen, the comforter. He comes and manifests himself in all these things. As our teacher, he teaches. That teaches something different. Let me tell you, all new heavy revies and revelations are just Now, you may have just got it, but it ain't new. Now, I, used, I like to, a lot of times you say, uh, used to say, uh, you know, a lot of these new revelations are nothing but an old heresy repackaged in a new, under a new uh, label. Hello. You know, you get, you get some of these things. We, we had, um, you know, one time we had uh, pigs in the parlor. Then you had deliverance ministry and all this kind of stuff. They didn't call it pigs in the parlor anymore because that all came from that book, Pigs in the Parlor. Great confusion to the church. If you've never heard of it, it, it came out as, as I was a kid growing up in my Pentecostal church. Pigs in the parlor made it circles through at least three or four times me growing up. It's like somebody, another generation came along and thought, oh, this is the greatest stuff in the world. Every, you know, every demon, every Christian has demons, and they got to go vomit them up because there's a nest of demons on the inside of them. They got to vomit them up. They'd have vomiting services. And you wonder why the other part of the church thought the Pentecostal charismatics were nutbags. Because that's the stuff they get to see. People vomiting in church to get rid of devils. Preachers getting up in service before they preach and said, uh, I cast 26 devils out of myself this morning before I came to church. You know where I am? I'm out the back door. Why? Because what if there was 27? You missed one. I had a friend who went to preach in that church, and on his way to the pulpit, the pastor's wife ran up there, jumped and tackled him, and cast a spirit of lust at him before he could preach. Yeah. Can we say cray-cray? This isn't, this isn't how God leads. This isn't, that's not a manifestation of this. And, um, you know, these things come along, and these narratives come along, and we get, that's why we need the manifestation of the spirit. We need the wisdom. We need the teacher. 
as we study the scriptures that the teacher is teaching us? And if you're coming up with something that no one has ever heard of in the history of the church, there's probably a reason. <laughs> in teaching. So it's not new revelation. But when you start getting revelations that we just don't have any Bible before, never had Bible before, and you've got to really twist it and, and manipulate it to come up with And he'll give you wisdom. Don't override the mm on the inside. Are you here? You're going home. Now, I remember a number of years Working his work. sermon. But something always scratched me on the inside. Now, I didn't say anything. It was nothing. What can you hold? Dog get it. It's good in my life is being in France at the Eiffel Tower. And they take those, they take a cylinder and shove it down into the baguette and then squirt the cat. You know, like in the Bible, they, you know, they, they've been already been filled with the Holy Ghost once, and they went back to the place and got filled again. I, we would get filled again. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That was heavenly. Praise the Lord. But um, how did I get off on the French baguette? Yeah, peanut butter and sliced bread. Oh, this minister, they, everybody just was enamored with him. But something kept bugging me. Well, it came out years later. He was, he was a practicing homosexual. And it had been rumored before that that it, that was true. People just, you know, you're just being judgmental or whatever. But just, see, I would have things come along in my life that many people were all caught up with and all enamored about. And something on the inside, now not being judgmental, you know, not being against them as a person, but something on the inside would go, that's just not quite right. There's something off there. But I must be wrong because everybody else thinks it's great. That's, how, that's kind of where I went. It bugs me, but everybody else just thinks it's wonderful. Even sometimes seasoned people that I respect would go, oh, that's just, you know, they, just, they were just wonderful. Um, some of y'all remember the woman used to go around and get oil and blood on her hands in the meetings and drop feathers. Y'all remember that back in, the, back in the 80s, late 80s, early 90s? And a lot of big ministries had her come up and they She'd have oil and blood and feathers would drop off of her and say, that's you know, the, wings of the, the wings of the spirit and, you know, oil and the blood. I mean, and people were just like, oh, and this just it gave her a form. Except one guy who had a television ministry, him too. He went to one of her meetings with, with cameras, and he had slow speed cameras. In other words, they could pick up extremely slow. Found out she had everything stuffed up her arm and, was, and, was, and, and, and had a way of getting it out. Proved it. Of course, she was gone, and all of a sudden, all these ministries had to come back step. You know? Don't override your spirit. Don't override the voice of the spirit, no matter how bold and strong and emphatic someone in front of you with a microphone makes it sound the other way. 
If your spirit is saying something wrong there, follow your spirit because you're trusting the Holy Ghost. Now keep your heart right. Don't be judgmental and don't speak nowhere around going, that, you know, that doesn't discern with me when you're arrogant, you know, self-righteous self. But if something's on the inside, Lord, I, that just bothers me. Now, you've got to help me here because, you know, I don't want to fight against you. You've got to keep your heart right now. But just don't override that. Are you here? Just because somebody's telling you you're, you're being unfaithful, you're being unspiritual, you don't get it. And see, we've done that. And I probably look back at my ministry when I was young, I probably did the same thing because you're just so confident that you know what you're talking about. <laughs> Hello. But as you mature and you grow in God, you find out you don't know, you're not quite half the hot shot you thought you were. You, 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 when you get mature and get older, you become like Paul, who in the least of all saints. Okay? You recognize that without God and without it being the Spirit of God in operation and manifestation, you're nothing. Okay? Now, the young whippersnappers all the time, we just think we know everything. Hello. You know, that everybody could learn a lesson from us because we just know it all. Then you get older and get down the road and you figure out you didn't know squat. Hello. Come on now. And I, I, I'll just be honest enough with you to admit, I, I'm, sure, I'm, I'm sure I could look back and study in my own life and go back and listen to old tapes and find out, man, you were just stupid. Like Dad Hagen said one time, he got to pray and seeking God and spent some time before the Lord. And finally, he realized he didn't know. He, he, he went to his wife and said, what in the word have I been preaching? It's a wonder that the deacons didn't have to come in and get me in and out of the rain. Because he just didn't. You know, so I didn't, you know, I, you know, it was just God began to show him things. If we'll listen to our spirit. See, this is the thing I'm after. And when we have the Holy Ghost and the manifestation of the spirit and guiding and leading us, I'm going to minister out of my heart, guys. Y'all get this? Just don't override it. Meeting, and everybody at the planet, I mean, they came out, and all the staff was all excited about this teaching and all this kind of stuff, you know, and about this guy and uh, about everything you had in your life was a, a conflict from your youth and all this kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, he, he was an expert on all these, you know, uh, challenges of life, of marriage and growing up and maturing. And he was 40 years old and still living with his mama. And you knew everything about youth and their conflicts. But something bugged me about that. And I'll be honest with you, that church took a turn because of that message. It went a different direction. Hello. There's one minister that I was talking about earlier who, who ended up being homosexual came to the church and said, the word of faith is dead. Now, the, the import or the intention may have been that, that that move of highlighting the message of faith was had ended, but it's not dead. You know, God's doing something new. God doesn't do anything new and throw everything else out. The message of living by faith is not something God throws out. Now, we may add more and more revelation and have other areas to learn and to grow and mature in, but it doesn't mean you do it at the expense of ridding yourself of the other. Okay? Message on grace does not mean that uh, we do away with living by faith. Who we are in Christ doesn't mean we, don't, we do away with any message about putting our body under putting on the new man. No, these are all added. These are all added to. We don't rid to add to. We add to. And so as we gain revelation in one arena, God adds other revelation in other arenas. These are all these revelations, all these things from the Word of God bring balance and wholeness to understanding God and our walk with God. All of it, not just one aspect of it. Okay? You know, I mean, you know, you, you got people who are talking about baptism, the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. You think the only thing about being filled with the Holy Spirit is speaking in tongues. Old Pentecostals, we were like, we we're adamant about speaking in tongues. I said, you know, that, so there's more to the baptism of the Holy Spirit than speaking in tongues. Now, we don't throw that out. We just add to. Okay? We grow in these things. And it is the working of the Spirit in our life 
For it is God who is all the while at work in us, creating up in us both the desire and the will to work for his good pleasure and desire. Amen? That's the amplified classic version of that from over there in uh, uh, Philippians. Okay? It's God who's all the while at work in us. The Spirit of God's working in the teacher. See, remember we, talking about, we got on all this about the teacher. See, that's the man, manifestation of the Spirit. He manifests as your teacher. And it's very important, you know, if I say something that gives you an ant, you better go home and study and make sure it's God and not me. I'm not perfect. I have stood in the pulpit before and said I was wrong. I just didn't see it at the time. But when I saw it, I was wrong. Well, I'm not going to stand up there and defend my position like an idiot. If I was wrong, I was wrong. You know? I mean, there's a lot of people. I remember John Osteen, what time was this to him preach? Now, John Osteen was Joel Osteen's dad. I love Pastor John. I, I mean, I loved his ministry. I loved the way he ministered. You know, uh, he, he was a Southern Baptist. Um, he, 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 was, he, he told stories, and he was hilarious. You know, he had this canary story. He had his football story. He had the car dealership story. You know, had the story about their church. Now, they were still, they had for years, he kept his papers with the Southern Baptists for years. You know, he had become full gospel, but, you know, tongue talker. But he stood up in his pulpit one Sunday morning and started teaching on, on the gifts of the Spirit and teaching, you know, well, you know, wisdom is our, uh, you know, our philosopher, uh, knowledge is our, is our universities, um, healings is, is our doctors. Um, and he got down to tongues. He said, those are linguistics, you know, and, you know, people who, you know, learn multiple languages. And he got down there somewhere, and he, said, he stopped, and he went, people, forget about it. I don't know a thing about what I'm talking about. Forget everything I said. Come back next Sunday, and we'll start over, and walked off the pulpit. Yeah, because he, he realized he got in the middle of that, and something on the inside of him started saying, yeah. And then he became one of the leaders of the charismatic renewal. Stood, at, stood, stood with the group at the top of the charismatic renewal. After he got baptized, the Holy Ghost became a little tongue talker. <laughs> Amen? Hallelujah. Dad Hagen said one time he got in the pulpit and, and said something about tongues, and it said something on the inside of him just went, eh. And he said, people, forgive me. I, I shouldn't have said that. I was wrong. I don't really understand that subject. I don't know anything about it, and I shouldn't have said what I said. Forgive me. Forget what I said. And then a couple years later, he's baptized in the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues. Amen? So there's going to be times in our life and, and as we walk and grow with God, we'll think, we'll, yeah, love God, do it all we know to do. And we're going to find out later we weren't quite right why? because the teacher was teaching us. And there's going to be ministries who've taught things that are going to come back later and go, you know, I was off on that. And then you're going to get people who, who are so connected to that narrative, they'll go, oh, he's been deceived by people. He's back off the teaching that. Well, I don't, I'm not going to back off teaching faith and healing, but you know what? There's other things to teach. Amen? I'm not going to say that we don't live by faith. We do live by faith. Amen. Amen. So the teacher will work in you. He works in me. And he manifests himself as a teacher. His advocate he manifests himself as your intercessor, as your advocate, as your strengthener. What, a, what an advantage to have greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Manifest as your strengthener in your life. <laughs> glory to God. In the hour of weakness, in the hour of despair, the strengthener shows up. Glory to God. Can we say amen? Yeah. Oh, we're so grateful. We're so grateful. We're so grateful for the manifestation of the Spirit that's given to us to profit. Yeah. You give us the advantage yeah. in life. Hallelujah. Over the works of the enemy. Glory to God. Can you say amen? amen. amen. We can trust Him to lead us and to guide us. Walk in the understanding that his work in us brings us liberty. Where the, where the, presence, where the Spirit of the Lord is there is liberty. It doesn't mean just because he showed up, you're free. It means when we're in his presence, he liberates us from our efforts and our abilities and our strength and infuses us with his. And if we'll follow after him and listen to him and go with him and let that work in us, oh my. I said, oh, my, how glorious and how wonderful. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. Well, we're going to stop right there. Uh, I trust you've gotten something out of these. these they've been more of a share from my heart. I've had, I've had some things here that I could share you know, specifically from. But you know what? 
Uh, there are times that in ministry, I share from my heart and have wisdom come. Amen. I've sat in services with, with uh, certain ministers where they weren't teaching them a quote, it's a Bible lesson on ministry. Share from the heart. And the Spirit of God takes that and ministers with that, teaches. Amen. Praise the Lord. We sure love you. To all you watching today, we, we pray that you have a blessed, merry, prosperous Christmas. May you be ever aware of the fact that Jesus is Lord, that as we celebrate the Christ Mass, the celebration of Christ, that his peace, and tranquility, and goodness and mercy overshadow you and your home, your loved ones. May you be a light to the nations, the resurrection power of Jesus Christ working in life, the transforming the change in Jesus' name. Merry Christmas. We'll see you on the New Year's Eve day, if, or if not, at least this Wednesday night, but then New Year's Eve day. Uh, before we the new year, we trust you'll join us on then as we prepare to enter into another calendar year in the natural on the earth. So another day, another time of victory in the things of God. Can you say amen? We love you. God bless you. Remember this, that this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Until next time, be blessed. Hallelujah.